Hello, and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Today, we are going to be talking all about dragons and bears. Oh, my. But <laughs> before we get into that, Alex, how's your weekend? Oh, man, the the weekend. So two weeks ago, we were in Scottsdale. Yeah. And so uh, coming back from Scottsdale, we went to the IFCA event, and that was really awesome. And, and actually, you know, the topic that we are speaking on today is, is based off of a speaker that we saw there. So that's cool. Um, and so we got back from Scottsdale. It's always a crazy work week when we have flights on a Monday. Yeah. Well, when we travel in general, it always makes our work week crazy. But then especially if we travel on a Monday. Yeah. Traveling on a Monday is a, a no-go. Um, not our favorite, but it was just kind of the situation at hand. And so we got back, crazy work week. And then this weekend was really just about recouping mm -hmm. um, and, and getting my ducks back into alignment and actually having some some recharge time. Because when we're traveling like that, it's not really recharging. It's mm -hmm. like we're just elongating our work period um, and pulling a seven-dayer. So um, that was the, the focus for the weekend was recharging the batteries a little bit. And uh, how was your weekend? Um, good. Uh, I guess I'm sick. Uh, if my voice sounds a little bit different, I have a cold right now, which is just, you know, I have not gotten sick in years. And you guys obviously know if you're regular lis listeners of the podcast that Alex and I got the flu earlier this year, um, just a few months ago. And now I have a cold which is no fun, but today is the absolute best I've felt. And I was able to sleep through the night all last night, no coughing and like runny nose and having to like sit up while I sleep, which is not a very comfortable sleeping position. Um, and we got to sleep together because the uh, <laughs> previous night I was up hacking and I just did not want to wake up Alex. Um, so I slept in Brandon and Mackenzie's room. <laughs> I sent her a picture in the morning and I was like, spend the night in your room. She was like, were you just too tired to walk upstairs? <laughs> I was like, no, I did walk all the way upstairs, then came back downstairs. Um, but all in all, it was good. It was a good time to to relax and to just catch up, like you said. Yeah. So what's the... Uh Walk us through what the topic is today. Yeah. So like Alex said, we were at the IFCA event in Scottsdale, and there were some great speakers there. But the one that Alex and I loved the most was going to be Bedros Koulian. And if you don't know about Bedros, I'm not going to give you the whole background, but definitely go check him out. He has his own podcast. He has a book called Man Up, as well as he is on social, of course. So definitely worth checking out. His story is I mean, insane. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, his his life story is fantastic. His ability to tell that story mm -hmm. is amazing as well. Um, there's a lot of things, and, and one of the things for for me that I really like, I can pull a lot from a person. I, I much rather learn from someone else's experiences rather than trying to do it myself, if you will. I, I love learning that way, and so he does a really great job and has dealt with a lot of adversity that I haven't even you know had in, in my life. And so it's cool to see that as well as just where he's at and, and what he's been able to build is very motivating, very inspiring, um, and just how he goes about his business as a whole and, and a lot of his core values that he has um, align with the things that I value. And so um, I've been a fan of his for a long time. Yeah, I think it's interesting with you stating of like seeing what he's accomplished is very motivating for you because sometimes people see others accomplish something and they get down on themselves and they're just like, well, they have this and I'm I'm never going to be able to accomplish that. But I think that's a commonality between you and I is we see someone accomplish something and we use that as massive motivation. And we even talked about that in the podcast where we talked about comparison mm -hmm. and how we use comparison to our advantage of being able to see what someone else Else has accomplished and using that to propel us and to fuel us forward. Yeah, I, I think that that is something that I'm very fortunate that intrinsically that's always been myself. I, I think that I've been fortunate for the people that I've surrounded myself, that that's how they think as well. I don't think that there's been a, a whole lot of circumstances in my life where someone is like in a woe is me mentality of, well, if they have that, they suck and you're making me feel bad. Like, mm -hmm. Truly, you're the owner of your feelings. Like no one can make you feel a certain way. You're making a either conscious or subconscious decision to feel a certain way of how someone said something or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Unless they are actively like, um, you know, impacting you of like physically. Mm -hmm. Like they, what they're doing should not affect how you feel. 
Um, and, and I think that that's something, especially from a social media perspective, because within social media, it is something that's almost rewarded, not almost, it is rewarded by um, individuals getting greater attention by bringing negativity into someone else or, or drawing negativity or poking fun at someone and those different factors. And so being able to draw from someone else's success and be like, yo, I can do this too. Mm -hmm. And this, they're showing me what's possible. They're giving me the roadmap. They're giving me an opportunity uh, to get a peek behind the curtain of how they did this. Like what other time in life have we had the in incredible like billionaires and those different factors on podcasts for like an hour plus? Mm -hmm just talking about their life, talking about their experiences and, and giving insight. And so being able to uh, pull things from that is such a privilege to us. Like these podcasts are free, yeah, literally free. Like, yes, the, they're getting paid for their ads and those things during the episode, but the reality is, is that it's free to us. And so it's like a crazy resource. And, and I think Bedros is a, an incredible f resource and has been a, a help to me from a mentality standpoint, as well as just how I approach things. Yeah. And honestly, that's how I started my own business when I did start is I saw someone else doing it and I thought, well, then I can do it too. And I remember my parents being like, hey, can you like even pay rent if you're a personal trainer? And I was like, yeah, yeah, this person did it. And I used that to be like, this person could make millions of dollars. I'm going to shoot for that as well because they were able to do it. So I can too, um, which I think it's really cool. And I'm glad that we share that. Right. And like someone else's success does not take away from yours. Correct. Like there is, I was having a conversation with, with Hayden yesterday. We were talking about clothing brands and he has found a couple of, of clothing brands within the like nature and outdoor community that are massive that I have never heard of. He had never heard of these just massive communities of big brands that, you know, in our years of life have never heard of, but they've made millions, if not billions of dollars in that time. And it's like, I was, un it was unbeknownst to me. And there's tons of people that are like that. And so like one person's success is not going to take away from yours, even if you feel as though from like a uh, proximity perspective that it's like, well, they are, they're taking customers from me or they're taking uh, friends or whatever from me. It's like, dude, you've got to focus way more on yourself. Yeah. Get better at what you're doing yeah. and then you'll be able dude. to do that as well. Um, as well as if you're a coach and you have that mindset of just like, there's too many coaches and it's oversaturated. Please look up the top leading causes of death and know that there is all fitness and diet component, um, as well as go out on any street and you see that people need help. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the dragon component of this. So dragons, as Bedros explained, are going to be things that we're dealing with internally. It's going to be your inner critic, and it is going to be the lies that you tell yourself, whether it's that you're not good enough or you're unlovable or you're not worthy. First, you are going to find evidence for whatever you're trying to believe. Uh, but it's also going to be the trauma that possibly you haven't dealt with in your life. So to talk about dragons a little bit more, what did you get from that speech that he was giving? Or do you have anything to expand on on what dragons are for you? Sure. I think that with, I mean, from his speech, it was, it was something that resonated heavily and, uh, within the, the demons that are, are you're fighting through and those different factors, I think that it's, it's always, you're always learning more. You're always finding different demons that maybe, um, weren't presenting themselves as strongly in a different chapter of your life. And then you navigate into uh, a new relationship or you navigate into a new career path or you, you move to a different city and these demons are, are now stronger or, or they're more present in your life. And so you're having to navigate through them. And so um, I, I was able to kind of pinpoint the ones that I've been able to, to slay, if you will, uh, in the past, as well as ones that are uh, affecting me greater at this immediate moment. And uh, being able to identify those was, was really powerful. Um, some of the things that, that I struggle with, I suppose we can, it's, it, this, this can be a very vulnerable episode. I think that it has to be because if we don't allow for ourselves to be vulnerable here, it allow, or it doesn't allow for there to be true depth to this episode. I think that this becomes extremely surface level if we don't. And so some of those things that I've, you know, struggled with, like you have been such a tremendous help. Uh, I think that before 
we met, it was because you were, <laughs> you pushed me to get into therapy for you know the first time. It was something that I, I should have been in therapy from like a young age, just because of the things that transpired in my life and those different factors. It would have been such a huge help. And so you pushed me to get into therapy, um, as well as you are the, the person who I am able to be unapologetically myself. Like there is not another person on this planet that knows me or knows as much about me as, as you do. And the level of, of comfort that I, I feel around you because of that is, is tremendous. And, um, I didn't think that it was, was possible to have the, the strength of relationship with someone, uh, that I do with you. And, and that has brought a much greater version of myself because of that being kind of my, my compass, if you will, or, or my rock being able to take the strength of that relationship. And then that also strengthens other relationships as well as the relationship with myself, because now I'm able to, like I said, be 100% myself around you. And that's teaching me to love things more about myself. Um, and so I know I didn't give any direct <laughs> vulnerable, but I mean, I guess that's speaking to just me kind of letting my guard down and, and letting you in, mm -hmm. which has only strengthened our relationship. And you know, some of those things that I'm, that are coming to my mind are things that prior to speaking on them, and, and just holding them in my, in my mind and, and thinking about them, you know, too frequently was, was things that if I did ever tell you, or I did ever talk about that, you were going to like shun me or, or you were going to love me less or, or want to be around me less. And that was the opposite. You know, every time that those things have come up or things that we've worked through, um, it, we've, we've grown closer. And so my, my biggest fear was the, you know, opposite of what actually happened. Well, I love you so much too, and you're the best <laughs> ever. Uh, but I think that like within this concept, it's being able to look at like the issues that you haven't dealt with, the things that are limiting your growth, that are that glass ceiling on you, and you keep hitting that ceiling and it pushes you down and you're in a place where you might be more comfortable, but you're unhappy. And I think both of us came to the conclusion that we we're not willing to live our life unhappy. And I think that when we look at our dragons and there's going to be some that we publicly want to share and there's going to be some that are just for us, whether it's just for us personally or just for our marriage, and that is completely okay. You don't have to be you don't have to tell someone everything in order to be vulnerable or in order to be um, like open. You can keep things to yourself. But within looking at different dragons, I think a big part of my dragon that I've really had to work on slaying this year specifically was like that huge inner critic part of myself of always beating myself down or always tearing myself down. And instead, I have had to learn how to build myself up in these situations and not talk so negatively about myself and to have a better outlook on where things are going and to be able to take experiences and grow from them, which in the past, I was kind of stuck in this place of not being able to have good communication, not being able to be honest with myself and not being able to even get to the root of what was causing different issues. And with you saying that, I encourage you to go to therapy. I mean, you pushed me to go to therapy. And I remember very vividly because it was our first year of marriage and I was just like, I was struggling. I was, I was going through it. And I remember you were like, uh, why don't you just go to therapy? And I had already talked to, about therapy. I'm sure it was a little bit nicer than, why don't uh, you just go to therapy? <laughs> you know, those who know Alex can know that he can go very, very sweet yeah, or he can. can go- Or very direct. He can go very direct. Yeah. So it could have been either, um, but it was said with love at the <laughs> core of it, regardless of if it was direct right. or soft. Um, and I remember when he said that, even though I'd already been to therapy before, I took it as, oh my gosh, he thinks I'm broken. Mm -hmm. And he thinks I'm crazy. And if I can't fix it, then why does it even matter? But like going to therapy that year was like, I, I needed 
needed to do that. I needed to have that for myself. And that was something that Bedros talked about that he really had to get to is there was a lot of childhood trauma in his life, as well as he was dealing with excessive anxiety from the stress of his work. And then he like went through and he worked on his anxiety and he was like, okay, I, I fixed my anxiety. And then the therapist had asked, well, how's your relationship with your parents? Or how was your childhood? And he ended up like sharing stuff he didn't think that he was going to share because he had thought that he had gotten past it. But there's so much, and I think that we always reflect on that, of like what has happened in our past that we still need to work through. And we talked about it on the mental health podcast, but like finances and money was one of those. Those were That's a dragon that you have been working and slaying time and time again of what that has been in your life and what that is now. And you didn't come to all of your dragons all at once and say, let's fucking go. You went about your life and when a dragon came up or when you finally had to face it, you faced it and you worked on it. And I think that that's the part, um, and Bedros even talked about it, of like it's it's no coincidence that after that happened, after I went to therapy, our businesses did a hockey stick. Of They just went freaking up, straight up. And it's because you have to do that inner work to be able to grow in life, to grow in business, to grow in life, to grow in relationships, to grow in whatever you want to grow in. You need to be able to do that inner work because that's all Always going to be holding you back. And I think that's something we've realized through and through this year because we've done a lot of inner work, some by choice, some by just, yeah, we're going to have to because it's right in front of your face. Um, and I think that that's allowed us to really flourish. And we've had a lot of conversations about that of like, this was really hard to get through, but this allowed me to grow and become better because I faced it. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah. And, and I think I want to go back to some of those glass ceilings because I think a lot of these self-limiting beliefs are just that, where we're just speaking them over ourselves. And once we do the opposite, and, and I'll, I'll speak to one that I'm working on personally at the moment, is that I am not good at the written word. I, I do not do well writing or, or telling my story in a written capacity. I feel very comfortable speaking. I feel very comfortable on camera and those different factors, but I don't feel comfortable writing. I feel like I'm tr either, I, I, I don't want to come off as I'm trying too hard or what have you. And so I've always kind of pushed it to the side of, I'm not good at that. And I've kind of just, anytime we've had written task, I'm like, that needs to be somebody else's job because I suck at it. Mm -hmm. And over the last couple of weeks, I have put more effort into writing and, and trying. And I have liked what I have written um, because I'm spending more time on it. I'm not just like, well, I, it should be perfect. It's like, you're not even trying. You're not even putting effort into this. And so oftentimes these things that we're speaking over ourselves are just these fallacies that are, are not true. And then once we actually put effort into the thing that we're afraid of or the thing that is, um, you know, been challenging to us, to us in the past, all of a sudden that effort starts to apply. And then you're able to see that you're not so bad at the thing. And it's just a matter of putting in more effort and spending more time um, doing the thing to to be good at it. Yeah, I think that we learned a lot this year how much action helps our anxiety mm -hmm. from that because I would say both of us have struggled in our lives and at different points more or less with anxiety. Yeah. And then being able to not just take that as something that pauses us in our tracks and makes our life miserable, but recognizing that taking a step, taking action, putting effort in helps that because anything that you're thinking and building up in your head, it just gets worse if you don't take any action. Because just like you said of, oh, I'm not good at that. I'm not any great at that. Now you've put the barrier so high for the next time you write, then you're gonna be like, Psh, told you I freaking suck 
because you've not only spoken that over yourself, but you've taken zero action to do anything about it. And I know I've talked about it before, but with clients, when they have really high stress moments, I tell them to write down what they're stressed about because oftentimes we just say like, oh, I'm stressed or oh, I'm anxious. And you don't know what you're anxious about. And oftentimes just taking action towards some of those things. You can't fix everything, of course, but taking action towards some of those just makes you feel better. Like I said, I've been sick, but, um, and I got a portion of our Christmas decorations up. And yesterday I was like, I can't sit in front of the uh, computer. I don't feel well right now. Um, but apparently I felt well enough to dig out our Christmas tree um, from where it was and put up a bunch of other decor. But it like helped me of like, instead of this anxiety of like, not everything's up for Christmas and it's getting closer and closer to Christmas and just, it's not getting done. It was like, I'm just going to take action and do it. And the tree doesn't even light up perfectly all the way. I'll figure it out another day. But like I eased some of that anxiety that I had just by taking action. And that's a very small example um, in the grander scheme of what this year has been. But it's been a lot of just taking the action and doing it anyways. I, the the mental animation that I, I see in my head when I have these things now is that I see myself at, at the bottom of a hill. And then the days that I continue to push it off, that hill just continues continues to get taller. And then the things that I'm speaking over myself as to why I'm not getting that done or telling myself that I'm lazy or that, you know, just speaking negatively to myself, I'm just creating that, that mountain or that hill to get taller and taller. And so it, it allows for me to see, like, I am the one creating the difficulty of this, mm -hmm. this situation. I am the one who is putting the adversity in place that's not necessary. I'm, I'm putting undue stress on myself by my lack of action. Mm -hmm. And when I when I see that in my mind, I'm able to connect those dots. It's very easy for me just to take that first step. And because, you know, sometimes I'm creating such a daunting circumstance around such small things, yep. um, like small stuff that doesn't take any time really. Like I will just continue to push off because it's like, it only will take me like five minutes. But like, I don't, I don't have time to do it right now. Like I don't have five minutes all of a sudden. <laughs> and so those things, it's like, even if the hill is 50 feet in the air, I can sprint and get over it because it's so simple, but I, I created the adversity. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that is a, a helpful tool for sure. Um, and, and an easy way to nap, not an easy way, but an, I guess an easy way to connect the dots to get past it. Yeah. And I think it just connects also what we've talked about within this year of being in a spot that once we got out of our own way is when we are able to thrive or getting out of our own head. And I think that like encapsulates slaying the dragon is getting out of your own damn way and getting out of your own damn head and going and doing something instead of telling yourself you can't or instead of proving to yourself that you can't is taking that step. And I know I've already given the example within this podcast before, but like doing business stuff has been a dragon, so to speak, that I've kind of needed to fight because internally I'm dealing with like imposter syndrome and feeling like I don't know how to do this and I'm not going to do it right. But how can I ever improve if I don't take that step and I just do something about it and just taking the steps, even though I don't know everything, I, I'm doing what needs to be done and I'm learning along the way and I'm fighting that inner critic. I'm, I'm like dismantling that glass ceiling and I am slaying the MF and dragon. Yeah. And I think that the, like coming to the truth of like for, for social media, for example, a lot of the beginning of the year, I was very nervous on camera and, and, you know, conveying the education. We've talked about this on some of the other episodes and with the, um, I, I guess it would be imposter syndrome because I was creating a situation where I was creating these fallacies in my head that what I was you know, how I was saying things, how I was, was teaching them was wrong or, or mm -hmm. people could pick apart little pieces and be like, well, you said it this way and it, it's actually this and blah, 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 blah. And I have over the latter half of this year have come to a place where 
my truth is that I'm doing the absolute best that I can when I'm creating the content itself. And if I said something wrong, so be it. Like it, it is what it is. I understand that I'm not going to be perfect. And I know that I'm putting everything that I can into the content, into my work, into how I'm, I'm treating others and those different factors. And I have found such a level of peace because of that realization and, and that understanding that I'm just putting my best foot forward all the time. And if that is not the you know correct answer or the uh, it's not interpreted the the best way or received the best way. That's okay because I know in my heart of hearts that I'm doing that my I'm I'm coming from the best intentions possible, mm -hmm. and I think that that's always been me. I've always come from a place of this is my my best effort and my best intentions. But I had this you know voice in my head that even if that's the case, you still suck. Like you're still wrong, and, and that you you screwed up. You're wrong, and I think moving past that has been such a tremendous mountain that I have overcome. Mm -hmm. And I just want to mention in passing another um, dragon that I've really beaten down over multiple years is just that victim mentality. And I think that that's, again, getting to the root of why you feel like you're the victim in life and why life is happening to you. And once I finally flipped that on its head, that's where I saw a ton of growth. So yeah, let's go extreme ahead. ownership. Yeah, extreme ownership is the, the biggest thing. Like I I don't understand when individuals have adversity and just consistently point the finger elsewhere. <laughs> like it's just always someone else's fault somehow. Like they are the the constant. Mm -hmm. Like you're a constant in, in your life experiences. How do you not have any ownership for the things that are happening if you're the only constant throughout it all? Mm -hmm. And that drives, like uh, that is one thing. Oh my gosh, this is one thing <laughs> that I just cannot except around me whatsoever. Yes. Like, you know that <laughs> when this happens around us, family, friends, anything, like I, bro, I cannot take it. You like disassociate? I, I complete, like <laughs> I have, I, I don't want to say cut people out, but kind of, Well, it's it just drives me insane. It's not that you're cutting people out. It's once they've proven that they're not going to take Repetitive. action. So people in your life know that they are not going to come to you and complain about something that they haven't taken action. Not that people can't ever vent to you because first, if I preface it of like, I just need to vent, then you normally get that. Fair but game. we've gotten so much better at not even needing to vent because we're just dealing with the stuff that we're working right. with, working through. Um, but it's put you in a spot where people are already know, like, I can't bring my bullshit to Alex because he's not going to stand for it. So, and you point them straight. Again, you don't cut them out if someone's like, well, this isn't happening. You'll be like, okay, well, you didn't do this. And they're like, yeah, but, and then it's like, no, you just didn't do that. And so it's not happening. And so you didn't accomplish what you were trying to. Um, so it, it's not, like I said, it's not that you cut people out or anything like that. It's just that you have a standard for what you're vibrating on, <laughs> your vibration for life. Um, but you truly have a standard for like what you want in your life. And if someone's not going to match that and they're going to have that victim mentality or they're going to just always think life is happening to them, then you really don't have space to discuss that any further. They're still in your life, but like that topic is really off the table. I'm not dealing with that any longer. I, yeah, I think that it's just a, a matter of, I don't want someone to have a lesser day or a lesser life as a whole by a narrative that they're creating in their own head. Mm -hmm. Like just look at it factually, look at how things are truly happening and how can this change? What can you do? at this moment to improve this. Are you doing that? No. Well, I, I mean, why are you complaining? Mm -hmm. All right, we can, <laughs> we could talk about this for way too long. <laughs> so to go on to the bears, now that you have slayed your inner dragons, the bears are going to be external. And so any new level that you reach within business, within life, within anything that you're fitness going goals, after, everything. yeah, fitness goals, that is going to be a, a new obstacle that you have to fight to get to. So let's say that you are looking and you're like, oh, that life looks good to me up there. I, I want to go ahead and I want that life. Um, 
there's a bear you got to beat before you get to that. Quite life. a few. And that bear is going to get stronger, smarter, more ferocious, more intelligent each level that you're trying to get up in life. It'll even feel like it's reading your freaking mind because you're fighting something that's in your life that you have to surpass. I, I posted or reposted on Insta my story the other day. Um, I don't remember the exact quote, but it was saying, like, you're going to be keep handed the same problems or the same bad relationships until, like, you've dealt with your shit that you need to and you have decided to, like, live a better life. And that's a big part of this of, like, if you want to keep leveling up in life, like, you have to work and fight to get there. And when he was telling the story about the bear, I was thinking about, like, in video games, specifically Crash Bandicoot, um, how, like, once you reach the, you've, beaten the level then you have to like fight the master mm -hmm. of that level and like that's what the bear is and each time each level in crash bandicoot that master gets stronger and stronger and stronger and you know which ones where you're like i do not want to fight that person today because they are so smart um but you have to beat that to be able to go on so those bears are going to be those external pressures in life um and those dragons are going to be those internal things that you're not dealing with right i think that one way that I like to to frame it in, in my head is that as you have the, uh, the accomplishments, whatever those things are within any vertical of your life, is that when you hit that accomplishment and you set that next big goal, there's a large gap from your most recent accomplishment to your new goal. And so at the beginning of the time from that most recent goal to your new goal, you just feel like you're getting your ass kicked. And that makes sense because this bear that we're referring to is much stronger, much smarter, more efficient. And you're trying to take yourself from that previous level to that new height. And of course, that bear there is going to kick your ass for a little bit. And what can happen and what happens to a lot of people is that they put themselves in a scenario where they're getting their ass kicked by that bear and they just keep getting their ass kicked by that bear. Mm -hmm. And so they just hang out at that most recent accomplishment. It's like, bro, I can't, I can't do much more than this. It's over for me. I, that new bear, I cannot defeat. And they just kind of coast at that level. And for some people that's okay. Um, but I, I will say that the individual that's able to push through that threshold and, and take the ass beatings and be like, all right, I'm getting right back up. I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm back and better. I'm learning. I'm, I'm implementing new things into my life. I'm implementing new strategies. Um, and then all of a sudden you start to actually have an equal fight with the bear mm -hmm. and maybe you knock down the bear one time or two and then that bear gets back up and now you're having an even fight. And then shortly after that, or <laughs> a little bit longer after mm -hmm. that, you may knock that bear out and all of a sudden you get right back into the same cycle. And once you figure out that that cycle is just ever, it's it's evergreen, it just continues. And I, I feel as though that once I've, I figured that out, I gained such a level of peace that it's just the phase that I'm in right now and I've, I've got to stay calm, I have to stay patient and I have to figure out how I master or beat this bear or why I'm, being beat at this moment. Yeah. You have to get smarter. You have to become more efficient. You have to be able to claw your way through it. And I think part of that is I don't know if people have a conception of just life is supposed to be easy or if you have like this balance to your life that you just live this simple life and nothing's ever going to be difficult. But to be able to continue to level up in life, it's going to take some fight. And you're going to have to evolve as a person to be able to reach that next level. And this year, I feel like I have fended off a whole freaking army of bears that have come at me. And each time they just want to push me down and down and down. And each time I get right back up, even if I literally have a limb just fucking hanging off of me and keep fighting because I want that next level. I want more for myself and I'm not going to stay beat down just because it's easier to stay here than it is to fight the bear. Right. And I, I mean, coming back to the financial or, or fiscal aspect of things, I believed coming, like growing up in the financial circumstance that I did, I thought that money was going to fix everything. Mm -hmm. And I, in the, in this most recent year, I'll, I'll be as fully transparent with you guys as, as I can be. I, uh, we got to a point where I thought that everything would be so much easier. Mm -hmm. We reached a fiscal point where I thought, dog, this is, this is easy living. And this is just, we're, we're going to 
stay here. And I, I mean, we can talk about this too. We moved into the new house and I was miserable when we got here. Mm-hmm. I cried a lot. I felt like we made a terrible mistake. And I felt as though that like, and this is, is root, this is the root of it because I felt as though that I had like this house and, and where we were at the beginning of the year and, and last year and all of that was like, I had made it type feeling. And internally that was not, that was not true. Cause I hadn't done any, I had done some of my internal work, you know, a fraction of, of where I'm at now, what I've done throughout this year. Um, and, and I, I've realized that all of, of what I was seeking was, was internal. It had nothing to do with the fiscal aspect. And I was, I was able to see that I, I think I had to show myself as I have with my entire life. I, I am someone who is um, wanting to have the experience to know that that's what it is. Like there, there are those things I have to put my feet into the fire. I have to play the game to know what it's like. Mm-hmm. And I know just at the beginning of this episode, it's like, I wanted to learn from someone else's experience and not put myself in. You can have both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so you that can was take a little from both. Right. Both are going to happen. And, and I think that, um, you know, that realization has helped me tremendously and, and also coming to the point of financially being in a, a place where this is, is just a, a piece of, of how the game works. It's not the game mm-hmm. is, is, Massive from like a mental health standpoint, fulfillment standpoint, all that. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Yeah. And so the the big gist of his speech was just you have to do the inner work and then you have to fight to be able to level up in life past that. And again, that really connected with Alex and I. And he did wrap up the speech by telling a story about his dog and saying that they got this dog and they couldn't really handle it. It was a big old dog. And they had a trainer come in and they the trainer trained the dog. It was all good to go. But then she pulled Bedros over to the side and said, you really need to make sure that this dog is in routine and it has a purpose because otherwise he's going to start digging holes out- outside. And he's like, why would he dig holes in our yard? And the trainer said, because if you don't give him a purpose, he's going to find a purpose and he's going to dig holes and that's going to be his purpose. And he talked about how it just dawned on him of like, we dig holes in our own life. If we don't have a purpose and a routine, we find a purpose and dig a freaking hole into our life and make them all over our backyard of our life. And so being able to know like purpose and routine are going to drive you. And those are huge, huge drivers for us. And we've talked about this recently on our back patio, as we always do, um, of talking about so much of the reward of this year hasn't been financial. It hasn't been measured in a way that we would have normally measured it. It's been measured in how we feel about it. And it's not just about achieving something. It's about proving to yourself that you could achieve it or just staying true to yourself that you said that you were going to do it. And that feeling when your head hits the pillow of knowing I did what I needed to do today or I improved today is what keeps us going. And I think that that purpose at the core of like what physique development is, what we hope to be able to do within this company, that purpose runs so deep within the both of us that each day that we feel beat down and tired and exhausted and like we want to quit, that purpose is just thrumming through us. And then we've cultivated a routine and we have episodes on our schedule and how we've um, really made that be the case to be able to continue on within our lives. And so being able to ask yourself, do I have a purpose and do I even have a routine to facilitate that purpose? And another part of that is being able to like lock into your vision, lock into what your purpose is, and then break it down of what you need to do each day. And this is something Alex and I talk on a lot of like reverse engineering. If you want to reach this goal, you need to be able to look at it backwards. All right, what are the steps to get to this point? And that needs to be what your daily life is about. And that's how you need to build out your schedule and your routine is how am I going to reach this goal? So what things do I need to do day to day to accomplish that? Right. With going back to the analogy or, you know, speaking to 
Beatrice's dog, and and I will say Tucker is a, a <laughs> perfect example of this, um, where I I look at this as the different aspects of my life have their own home because mm-hmm. I, I think that you can have one aspect of your life thriving and and no um, holes dug in the backyard, but because this one is is so focused on it and there's so much light shed on it that in the other aspects, whether that be from like a mental health or physical health perspective, there may be tons of holes in the backyard of, of that house of yours. And so being able to manage all of them and and to be able to see a balance amongst it all is a, a really important piece. And also if you feel as though that you are struggling, being able able to think of it in that sense of what aspect of my life is is getting the least amount of, of attention? Is this lending to me being in a, a worse headspace or, or taking away from my, my day-to-day mentality or, or action um, and, and kind of going from there? Because once you see it kind of spread out and I'm we are both big on just having things on paper, getting mm-hmm. to see things laid out. Stop just thinking about things just in your head, like put it on paper and understand what you're thinking about and what you're talking about. Um, and I think that that's super powerful. Yeah. One last thing I want to mention, because it just um, came to my mind while you were chatting was, I remember a few years back that you had mentioned that you didn't want to go to therapy because you thought that that would make you lose your edge Mm. um, to a certain degree of you had accomplished so much and you had gotten so far along and you thought that, hey, if I fix these let's call them broken parts of me. Um, I'm not going to have this edge and I'm not going to be as good at what I do. Uh, Do you have any thoughts on that now since you have obviously worked on those parts? Do you feel like you've lost your edge? <laughs> I want to I want to clarify something um, because I, I feel as though that as we're, we're talking more financially that it sounds like we're just money bags. And <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> We've got a long way to go. There's a, there's a, you know, a, a long road ahead of us that I'm excited to to venture down. I've I've made more money than I've ever grew up having, and so any money beyond that was more than I've ever known. And so that's where I'm coming from. And and this kind of comes back to the conversation of if if we are talking, if someone else is talking about their accomplishments, it shouldn't hurt how you feel about yourself. If anything, it should motivate you that it's possible. And so take that. Okay. <laughs> Coming back to, uh, the, the aspect of, of losing my edge because I, you know, prior to going to therapy, I thought it was, I thought it was a money pit for one. I thought that it was just like, all right, the therapist gets a client and then they just hold on to the client until the end of time. And, um, that's how they pay their bills type situation. I was of that train of thought. That is not true. I'm sure that there are therapists out there that are just there for the financial gain and nodding their head and say, see you next time. Fortunately for me, that has not been my experience through therapy. Um, and then I also thought that, you know, losing some of that chip on my shoulder or or losing some of just like the inner anger that I just constantly carried was going to take that edge or, or that uh, that fire out of me. And honestly, uh, to my surprise, it's it's strengthened that fire. It's given me greater inner peace and better understanding of of what means the most to me and and has removed like this inner dialogue of of um belittlement Mm -hmm. i think that that's the biggest thing is that i would just kind of consistently tear myself down and and speak poorly of myself and um never really give myself my flowers and i also felt as though that if i gave myself my flowers that it was like you are, you're soft now. Like you, <laughs> you are, are turning a corner and I have found a balance there that I still have that fire. I still have that edge. Um, but I'm still able to recognize the accomplishments within my life. I, I still would like to give myself more time of, of recognizing those accomplishments and being aware of them. Um, but it, it's all a work in progress and I'm drastically better than I was when I first went into therapy three years ago. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm going to continue to get better as time goes on. But yeah, I think that it's just allowed you to be a better version of yourself. And I, I mean, I think I vocalized even at the same time of feeling like there were parts of me that I didn't want to dig into, or I didn't want to fix because I didn't know what that would mean for the rest of my life, or I didn't know how that was going to impact me. But facing those 
those dragons, those demons, and figuring out what was going on has allowed me to just be better. It's allowed me to like work through issues with you as far as whether it's a, a business issue we're going through or it's something within our schedule or whatever it may be. Like we're able to communicate better because we're not having all of these past layers like determining how we feel. We are now able to have more flow and openness within our communication and more understanding because we don't have all of these walls and barriers up from our past life before we knew each other. And it's just allowed us to have more flow of who we are, I think. And it's, again, those barriers just aren't in the way and you're able to understand yourself better. And so you're going to be able to connect with others better as well. Yeah, and, and I want to clarify as well that some of these, like, uh, dragons that you're facing, they may be ones that are not ever dead. Mm -hmm. Like they may represent themselves in different scenarios, kind of as we talked about at the beginning, and you're going to have better mechanisms in place and better understanding of what those things are to better control them and, and keep them at bay. And I think that that's a really important piece because I know that for myself, as I started to navigate through some of my inner work, I and, and there are some things that I've been able to work on that I don't that don't even cross my mind any longer. Mm -hmm. But there are some of those bigger ones that will kind of creep back in at times. I'm able to to keep it at bay and then creep back in and 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 put it back at bay. And so it's one of those scenarios that if you're you know listening to this and you're like ah, I I thought I I thought I got over this but I really didn't. It's like you're still in the process of of battle with that one and that's okay. Like that's not a bad thing. Like you're not doing anything wrong. It's just a matter of of the chapter that you're in in your current life. Yeah, and continuing to work at it and grow through it and um, be open to what an answer could be for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, powerful episode. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels it feels short and sweet. These these type of episodes, I'm never really sure how long they are because we just kind of get lost in conversation. Mm -hmm. I love these you know type of episodes, but um, if you guys are enjoying the um, more conversational. I don't, I don't want to call them, you could call this, I guess, motivational, I suppose, mm -hmm. but it's just, you know, talking about experience, being a human and, and having that dialogue, I think is powerful. So if you guys are enjoying this, uh, leave a review. If you're <laughs> watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment, <laughs> but give us a thumbs up. Uh, do you have anything, uh, to finish off with? Um, I don't believe so. Oh, Yes, I do have something to finish off. You're listening to this on freaking January 2nd. And so happy new year. It's 2023. What the freaking crap? I don't know. But hopefully this episode was going to be very helpful for you going into the new year of being able to slate out not necessarily your new year's resolutions, although you can do that. I am a product of a new year's resolution for my fitness goals. We should talk about that. Um, what, Not, right like? okay. Not right now. Okay. I was now. like, we'll have a, we'll have like a separate episode for it. <laughs> um, I am a product of a um, New Year's resolution of, of getting into fitness and it finally sticking. So I am pro New Year's resolutions, but being able to really make a plan for yourself, exactly what we stated in this episode of being able to look at what your vision is, what your purpose is, what your goal is, work backwards from that and put together your day to day life. There's a lot within dreaming, but there's also a lot within and doing. And hopefully you're able to dream up what your future looks like or look at what your dragons are, what your bears are, what those demons are, and be able to start chipping away at them piece by piece. So happy freaking new year. And thank you so much for your support all through 2022 with this podcast. And we cannot wait to keep making podcast episodes and more for you in 2023. <laughs>